Hi everyone, this is Mia and I am here to show you a few watercoloring techniques on how I colored this cute stamp set called Country Birdhouse. This set is a part of a sweet collection and it will be available in the new catalog which is coming soon. All the materials I will be using would be in the description below. For the birdhouse image, I decided to stamp it using the color code Crumb Cake. And before I forget, the card that I'll be making, the size is actually A5. I will put the birdhouse exactly at the center of the paper. So using the same ink, crumb cake for the bird, let's stamp it near its house. There you are. Now let's add some flowers. I will start painting the entrance hole of the birdhouse using a number three round brush. I will wet the area first with water. Now I am applying a medium consistency of dark blue. The pigment will spread gradually onto the wetted area. With water coloring, there is less manipulation if the paper has been pre-wetted. I am aiming to make the right corner darker than the left to give the impression of a shadow and at the same time a 3D effect. I am adding more pigment here and with the aid of a brush I am just guiding um, the ink to spread evenly. For the scallop images I am applying a dark shade of pink. Heading on to the base of the birdhouse, I will be applying the wet on wet technique. So while the area is wet, I am putting a medium consistency of dark gray. The painting doesn't have to be uniform. Some areas will be left unpainted. A rustic effect would be perfect. The roof will be colored a dark gray like the base. Since the base has dried up a bit, I am going back to it and apply a few more layers of dark gray to give an illusion of a wood grain effect. Now going back to the roof to add more layers or lines. Now 
Now going back to the entrance hole, I am adding another layer of blue. For the bird, I'll be using three colors, yellow, light green, and turquoise. And while the pigment yellow is still wet, I am putting the second color, which is the light green. I'm going back to the roof while I'm allowing the ink on the bird to dry a bit. This would be the same blue color I will be using for the sky later on. Here the roof is fully dry. I'm adding more details by adding finer lines. Going back to the bird, once the paint has dried, I am going to add another layer of the yellows and the greens. I am now gradually introducing the turquoise color. Letting an area dry first before continuing on adding another color or layer will give a different effect. It's all about patience. The turquoise color would go to the tail. And same goes to some parts of the wing. The lightest color of orange will be for the feet. I'm coloring the beak with the lightest shade of gray. To gain a blurry background for the background, we need to do a wet on wet technique, meaning we will wet the background first with lots of water. And to do that, we need to use a special brush called a mop brush. I am putting a nice layer of water on the watercolor paper, but ensuring to avoid putting water on the flowers. I will be painting randomly on certain areas around the flowers. This first color that I'll be using would be light green. And while it is wet, I am adding another shade of green, a bit darker than the first one. Again, trying to avoid the small flowers the tip of my paintbrush only goes as far as the boundary of the flowers. Now I am doing the same thing for the upper portion of the card, wetting it again. I am painting a blue color for the sky, which is a similar blue to the second layer of the roof. You can apply more water if you feel that the paper is sort of drying up. So I'm now using green and the intention here is to make it blend with the blue. So here's another darker shade of green on top of the light green. This would resemble the leaves. Remember, the paper is still wet, so the ink will just spread and give a blurry, nice effect. The good thing about wet-on-wet wet technique, it 
provides a subtle blending of the colors. The edges aren't sharp and it is soft to the eyes. The third layer would be a thicker consistency of green. It will be mostly or frequently applied around the flowers to make it pop. Now using a permanent marker, I just wanted to make the eye of the bird more black. I am now using a white gel pen for the tail and the wing. Now let's color the front of the house. So I am back using my mop brush with a nice pointy edge. I am very careful in putting water or applying water on the front of the house. Now I am applying a very light colored green. I am after a rustic look for the birdhouse. So some areas would be left unpainted and that's okay. So the paper is still a bit wet. Let's create some shadow on the right hand side of the birdhouse. Now let's pretend that the light is coming from the right. And if that's the case, then it is just right to put a darker shade of green on the right part of the birdhouse as well. And this will give a very nice illusion effect in the end. So I've let the work dry up a bit. Yep, I think that's perfect. Now I am back to using my number three round brush. Number three round brush is quite fine compared to the rest of the brushes that I use. This will give more detail like fine lines and I'll be using the same brush to add uh, leaves to the flowers later on. You can also use the side of the brush to create a nice effect on the paper. I'm now adding little shadows for the scalloped area of the birdhouse. This will make it look like it's separate from the rest of the roof. I am adding more details around the flowers. This would be a very dark green with a medium consistency. Working on the flowers, at first I wasn't really sure if I wanted to color the flowers because honestly, as it is, they look so faint and so cool like they're white or yellow or peachy. But then I thought maybe just make them look like they're pink. Here I am using a dark shade of pink for the center. A more diluted pink for the petals of the flowers. Here is the final product or final card with a cute sentiment at the front. I hope you learned a thing or two from me today and if you have any questions, drop me a line. Bye!